Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, unfortunately, the person who's supposed to be loading the slide seems to have gone to Bolton. So um, I'm going to have to wing it and talk without the slides, but don't worry about it. Um, I would first of all like to say thank you to Stuart Agnew, who has been my unstinting supporter since I came into the party, which was quite recently, and also to Joa Batten, who has given me this opportunity. Um, and I'm going to talk about the Euro, but I also want to talk a little bit about economics in general. Um, economics of people, the type of Trump economics, the, people, the sort of economics that people understand, everyday economics of jobs and bills. And the, let's just talk about the Euro to start off the Eurozone. I mean, it is one big protectionist racket. That's what it is, an undemocratic. Run by Germany, and if you don't comply, we will just threaten you. And thank God we didn't join the Euro. <laughs> it's our saving grace. The Euro is like a credit card that you run with your neighbour. Except you're somebody who hangs tea bags up and you reuses them on a knife, whilst your neighbour just has takeaways all day and throws them in the bed. But unfortunately, you share the same bill. And that's sort of what's happening. And I wanted to show you a lovely slide of Singapore. Now, we always get told, oh, we're too small, we can't survive without being in the Eurozone. And Singapore has 6 million people, and I want to just give you one number. In 1990, in sterling terms, the average Singapore monthly wage was £500 a month. In 1990, the average British wage was £1,000 a month. And now, the average Singapore wage is £5,000 a month. 5,000, and our average wage is 2,000. And don't you think the Momentumites, the Corbynistas, those young people, if they were earning the same as the Singaporeans were earning, they would believe in small government, in independence, in the capitalist system, not to bring us Marxism. <laughs> was going to be about the unemployment rates in the Eurozone. Greece with 40% youth unemployment. Juncker gave his speech last week and he mentioned 40% youth unemployment. It has been higher, but he never mentions it's the Euro that's causing that. The Euro runs for Germany's benefit. 25% in Spain, 30% in Italy. Every country in the Eurozone has got a problem. Poland, it lost all its young. Bulgaria lost a third of its population. And its Muslim percentage increased from 7.5% to 15%. It lost its young people because they all came to Britain. Britain, it's clogged roads, it's, it's waiting lists, it's housing that we can never control. And it's the Euro that's causing that. And Milton Friedman said something really important. He said, you can have a social security system and borders, or you can have open borders and no social security system. And we're trying to do a bit of both. Diane Abbott thinks that we can have open borders and not go bankrupt. Let me tell you something good. I think the euro is going to implode. And it's going to implode soon. And my next chart, which of course I can't show you, but it's one that looks like this. It starts like that, up to 208, and it was all five, and all the lines went along, and suddenly it does that. And 
you can imagine there's one line up here and there's two lines down here. And that's a positive. And that's Germany with one trillion euros in, again, in something called Target 2 that you don't need to know about. But basically, it's got a whopping credit against Italy and Spain. And that credit, Target 2, which you probably have never heard of, but watch out for it. It's going to be like subprime in 208. You've never heard of that either. And suddenly, everybody heard about it. That's what's going to kill the euro. <laughs> It's always the financial rate systems. It broke the Soviet Union eventually, the demographics and the financial. It's breaking Venezuela now. Venezuela, people you know, are basically not just about eating insects now, and they have an economy with the biggest oil reserves in the world, and they have an income less than they had in 1950, and that's what Corbyn will bring us. Hope to have a house, hope that they can get a car, hope that they can have a job. And the way we're going, we have no hope. We can't eat diversity. The Chinese don't care about diversity. And we have to care about our country. And if we can show people that if we had a Singapore system that worked, that we would be prosperous and that would be, that would save our country. I think I'm gonna finish on that note, but I just want to say, watch out in the next two years. Financial markets always take longer to start the damage than you think, but once it starts, it works really fast. And who is going to save the European Central Bank? Because if Britain and the Bank of England started going down, we are the Bank of England. Except, of course, we're run by Carney, who is a Canadian earning 875000 a year. And I'm going to end on one thing. I want some populist economic policies that people can understand. And the very first one I would like to introduce is nobody in these public sector bodies, these quangos, these universities, earn more than Theresa May, the Prime Minister. She earns 175,000. Why should she